Welcome to the wine cave. I'm Moshe Meyer, owner of the wine cave and manager, and I would love to show you around. Here we have California wines, which is fruitier and uh, from New World wines. Over here we have French wines, which is earthier and deeper into the soul, so you get more flavor and taste. We have Israeli wines over here, more French wines. These are ports and dessert wines for after the meal. Here we have all the Moscatos from around the world. We have a lot more as well. So what kind of questions do you get around Pesach time? I get um, what wines to drink for the Koises, of course. And what's your most popular wine? And uh, should it be rosé wine? Should it be Cabernets or uh, spicy wines, low alcohol wines? So I always tell people there's no such thing as the most popular wine. Just like people don't eat steak 7 o'clock in the morning and they don't like eating scrambled eggs. 10 o'clock at night there's a time and a place for every wine and every food. You always should, I can give uh, people a little rule in wine and food. The food should never overpower the wine and the wine should never overpower the food. Meaning, if you're going to have uh, a, a heavy fish with a heavy sauce, you should do it more with a deeper or creamier white or a deeper red. But if you're going to have something light, uh, like a light chicken or a light salad, you should have a lighter wine. Light, in, light I don't mean in alcohol light, I mean in body. In terms of the skin of the grape, should be light it should blend together. What we're going to open right now, because it's before Pesach, I would love to show you Russian River Chardonnay. Why Russian River Chardonnay? Everybody knows that little secret, what goes best, best with matzah? What goes best with matzah? Everybody's dream a whole year. Butter, right? Russian River Chardonnay, because they put it in oak, it gives that buttery flavor. And when you eat that with matzah, which you're allowed to, even though people that don't brox or don't eat butter with matzah, this is just heaven. So, let's try a little bit, Shemon. Let me teach you something else that people always ask me, how to open wine. It has two steps, that's called a waiter corkscrew. What you do is you go one, two, and off we go. We don't fill it up till the top, so we can have all the aromas and uh, flavor. Should be, we should be able to smell it. Rule number one is we hold it against a white... I don't have nothing white here, so we're going to use this. We hold it against a white thing so you can see the deep color of the wine. See, it's a little yellow. And we look at the wine. This is a Rydell wine glass. It's handmade, so you almost three to the, see through the color of the wine and you give it a little swirl so the wine should open up. If it's exposed a little to oxygen, you're going to get the smell in the bouquet. You will be able to smell all the aromas in the wine. Wow, it smells from a little uh, toast, very buttery, so I think it would go great with, uh, it doesn't have to be any matzah that you buy, if it's shot, satmer, popa, mishima, whatever you buy. And I think, Shimon, it's time for you to smell it. Tell me what you smell. You smell that butter? It smells buttery? really, really good. It smells delicious. L'chaim. B'rach ato d'no al-hani melech b'orim 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 You swirl around your mouth for six seconds to get the whole taste. On the tip of your tongue, you taste the sweetness. On the side of your tongue, you taste the acid. So, a lot of white wines like Sauvignon Blanc that we have from uh, Goose Bay, they won, I think, a gold medal. Fantastic wine. It tastes from grapefruits and it's a little high in acid. So, what goes great with fish, Yemen? Lemon, right? But you can't bite into a lemon on its own. But if it's blended and you put it on the fish, it tastes delicious. So, this would go perfect with fish. And this would go more uh, perfect with something that's a little more, a little bit heavier. 
the first two cases, are you, do you it, recommend one type of blend and then for the last I, two yes. a different on blend? Yes, the first two cases it's on an empty stomach, so you want something light, you don't want something so heavy. So you have two options, either you drink an older wine, what happens in the bottle of the older wine, the tanning of the grape lets loose a little and the fruits come out. And so you will appreciate the wine way more, or you drink something lighter in grape, like a Cabernet Franc, or a Pinot Noir, or a Melbeck. Not as heavy as a Cabernet, which is so masculine, it's very hard for the first or two courses to gulp down, except if you ate a big meal before your Seder. It comes from France, it's a rosé wine. So the grape itself, they squeeze out the grape just like any other thing, but the color is not going to be so dark because they only dip in the skin for like a couple of hours. So this wine, you can drink a little chilled, but you're not gonna have that heavy taste what you have from a Cabernet or a Malot. What's the alcohol content on this first bottle? The reckon? alcohol content is 14%. Most wines are between 13.5 13, 13 and 15%. Now, is that a bit too heavy for... for I don't this? think so. What I think is that a lot of people say they can show me on this bottle. I don't know. Let's see. This bottle made me, got me so high and so good. It has nothing to do with the bottle itself, in my opinion. I think it has to do if you ate before, if your stomach is empty or not. Another thing, people always tell me the next day... Well, most people going into the Seder, their, their, their stomach is going to be empty. It's supposed to be empty. Yes. Well, yes. Well, so, what do you recommend? I recommend the same wines, but lighter in body. Just lighter in body, it should be easier to drink. People that drink a bottle of wine every Shabbos can handle two, three cups of wine. Now, does it make a difference also with, with the person themselves? For example, if someone's 350 pounds versus someone doesn't. 180 it pounds? It doesn't. It doesn't. Crisis. We have here on sale the Malartic 2005. Like, like I explained to you before, that because it aged in the bottle for 10 years, the tanning let loose, and this is Grand Cru. In 1870, they classified the depth of the earth. And this is one of the most expensive um, uh, land in France. So you're going to get the best fruits out of it. And the tanning is not going to be so heavy because it aged in the bottle. So I think it's perfect also for the courses. This is Siegel's Unfiltered. It's one of the most popular wines from Israel. Why? Because it's very fruit forward and very low in acid. So it's like a coffee with a little bit of sugar. That it was a cappuccino even, that you can just gulp it down. You recommend it should be at room temperature for the first two cases. Should it be cold? What do you recommend? Room temperature in the, in the United States, people mistake room temperature. By us, room temperature is 70 degree versus Europe, it's 63 to 64 degree. Most people drink wine too hot or too cold. Too cold is like putting it an apple into the freezer. You bite into it, you don't feel the taste. Too hot. It's like a tea is way too hot and you can't feel the taste of the wine. And uh, I think that room temperature, it should be between 62 and 64 degree. You will taste the fruits. And a lot now of Now is it better for digestion also when it's room temperature um, versus cold? No, it's cold? just easier to sip and you will appreciate it more. And uh, a lot of people ask me about opening bottles before. Opening bottles before, what happens is when you're going to open the bottle, or you should put it in a decanter, which is like, a, you know what a decanter it looks like a little pitcher? It lets the wine air out. I've seen people put in decanter wines three, four hours before, and we blind tasted them with the same wine four hours later, and they thought it's a 15 to $20 more um, expen um, um, upcharge on the wine. I think it opens up, and, and, and it tastes way better than it because it's closed and you don't get the little oxygen but only young wines you should open three four hours before like wines like the Malartic 05 or Leaville 05 or these old wines shouldn't be open more than tw 10 to 20 minutes because it will die out because people think that champagne is sweet or champagne is dry champagne is an area in France and it's the it's an area just like there is Burgundy just like there is Bordeaux, just like there is Pomerol. It's an area in France where they classify that it's called Champagne. They blend over there between Chardonnay and the Great Pinot Noir and they make sparkling wines. This is real, these are real Champagnes. You see this is Grand Cru. You remember I showed you on the Malartic. This is one of the best Champagne. You have the, the Drapier is delicious. We have Louis Dittassi Rosé, which is out of the world. And in 
And as we move forward, in Spain it's called cava. This is cava. And in Italy it's called prosecco. Sweet wines are not champagne. These are dry, sparkling wines. How does wine age? Um, again, a lot of people mistake that wine ages only in the barrel. Wine ages only in the barrel 10%. 90 percent it's in the bottle but 90 percent of wines don't age more than five to seven years and a lot of people over age wine it's called a cork tease they always talk about the wine they have in their house by the time they open it it's vinegar so you have to know when it's peak so a wine closed never opened can spoil in the bottle also definitely most wines will spoil within 10 years only the very intense very dry and very uh, well made will age. I would say only 2% will o age over 10 years. Okay, and how about a regular simple wine? Let's say a, a Kerem Kal that people use on Pesach. Once it's open, how long is that going to last? Um, all wines, the, maybe the Kal, because it has sugar uh, or natural sugar, it will a um, o um, be able to hold on its own for a week or two. But dry wines, as these Cabernets or Melos or Shiraz, you have the Castel Grand Vin, Raconati. It's just like you open a grapefruit or a plum on your counter. It will hold for two days and then it will get oxidized. Some people like to put it in the fridge. I don't like, I don't like to put it in the fridge open cut up fruits because it gets that soggy taste. So I would rather eat from outside of my counter. So that's the old debate if you should put open bottles of wine in the fridge or take it out. This is a wine opener. It's called Coravin. It's designed to, you can open any bottle as you want, let's say you open a bottle of wine by your son's bris and you can put it away for his wedding. It seals back the bottle. And I was last night, 2 o'clock in the morning, with my partner by Reb Cheskerot from Barra Park and we showed him the product and he said you're allowed to use it on Shabbos. And you can use it, uh, you don't have to toy with it, uh, even the pen. It's a surgical needle that goes back in here. I would love to show it. But you have to tell me what wine you want to open. A Cabernet, a Merlot, a Shiraz, a Rosé. You see this cork is way back in? Yeah. I'm putting it on top. We push, we push it in, the needle. You let out the little ear. Look what I'm going to do now. Pull it back up, take it off, cork is back in. It, what happened is, as it pumped out the wine, the surgical needle pumps back in air and it seals back the wine, so it seals it forever. So for people that have expensive magnum bottle wines that they want to open, uh, or for restaurants, um, bars that they want to reuse, you can sell high-end wines by the glass, it's a perfect product. You should put your nose, people are embarrassed, you should put your nose all the way in, but smell it as you smell a perfume. Don't like sniff it. Put, put your nose all the way in there and smell it. And you'll see how it changes. You see how the glass goes wrong when it comes up? It goes like this. It's to keep the aroma inside. So every grape supposedly has a different glass shape. It's amazing. People always ask me, why do you need this nice glass for the wine? Why can't you drink it in a hot cup or in a plastic cup? It's all fake. I told them, yeah, welcome to the world. That's reality. It's the same like you take a steak. When it's on that beautiful plate with the beautiful music and, and the ambience around it. You're dressed well. You will take that same steak on a plastic plate where you just ate scrambled eggs with a plastic knife. It will not taste the same. And I always tell people, bring me five to ten people. I'm ready to give private lessons about wine. When you go to the kosher wine show, of course you can taste amazing wines, but it's a little hectic and it's overpowering. People get like over excited, they're not sure what to taste, no guidance. I'm here to help you taste better wines. I want to take you downstairs where we have our scotches, bourbons, whiskeys, blended scotches. Uh, the shelves are half empty because it's a few days before Paiser. This is a wine cooler, a wine storage room that's temperature controlled. You see how the wines are laying like this? It holds the cork there so it gets moist, so it shouldn't get dried out. We have a lot of older vintages over here and uh, it's not set up. We're in the middle of setting it up. We have, look, 
have a Four Gates private winery, 2003 Syrah. I had it Hanukkah at home because it's a little, I mean, Shiraz is a spicy grape and pizza with a little spice is amazing. I had it with pizza at home. A parent doesn't want to give high alcohol something. What would you recommend for children? Uh, first, uh, age doesn't matter only in a bottle of wine, Shimon. So it doesn't matter if they're 13 or 12 because it's way more healthier a glass of dry wine than a cup of Coke, in my opinion. And so I would ask them, if the kids are mature, I have a nine-year-old son that would drink, uh, he drinks a little red wine, red wine, and I think it's healthy and there's nothing wrong. But I do have like uh, lower alcohol but higher in sugar. So you have to make a decision. Yeah, but some if people you... watching this are going to say, what's this guy talking about? Alcohol, kids, they're going to get drunk, they're going to be falling asleep wine? by the third kites already. Yes. You don't want that. You want the kids wine to... Wine doesn't make you fall asleep. It's because you're tired from a night before or you overate. Wine itself actually keeps me up. Wine and food makes you fall asleep. And, and when you, you have a side with such nice stories and our history and, and whatever... <laughs> songs we have. Who wants to fall asleep? So would you recommend water in between cups of wine even for children? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Not to get dehydrated. But I gotta go. It's almost the cider. It's starting. I have to open my wines to air out. I'll see you soon. Get yamtif.